Hello students, Namaste. Welcome back to the course on Labor Welfare and Industry Relations. Over the last three lectures in this module 8, we had looked into child protection, its various laws concerning children and what are the different amendments of the child protection law in India. Now today, from lecture 4 and lecture 5, we look into specifically the Central Board of Workers Education Scheme. So we look into the rationale, the scheme, the composition of the board and moreover what this board is all about in today's world. So let's dig deeper into this. I'm Dr. Abraham Sirlaisak. I'm an assistant professor at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. Now when we look into the CBWE, which is Central Board of Workers Education, it's an autonomous body under the Ministry of Labor, Welfare and Employment of Government of India. So I would like to introduce uh, you to this CBWE. Lot of facts are coming your way where you are actually looking into the existence or how the CBW came into existence and how it has uh, fared over the period of time and what are its essential objectives, missions, functions, etc. So CBWE was established to implement the workers education scheme. Now there is no denying the fact that the workforce happens to be the most critical resource of any organization. You ask any employer, be it an entrepreneur who has just started his venture with maybe two to five workers working under him or her, or maybe to a big conglomerate or an MNC where there are thousands and lakhs of people working under them. So all these organizations will tell you one thing, which is that human resource or human capital happens to be the most vital resource of the organization, no doubt about it. When you are looking into human resource, there is an inherent need to develop this human resource and that's where this activities or aspects like CBWE comes into picture. So that should be the primary understanding where you can appreciate the existence or the emergence of such an act or let's say such a movement in altogether. So CBW started on September 16, 1958 based on the recommendations of ILC, Indian Labour Conference and the Ford Foundation. It was registered under the Society's Registration Act in 2014 and this is a critical update. If you remember in the introduction video I had categorically said that there are certain laws which are outdated, there are certain aspects which have gone out. I have tried to update it the entire course as much as possible and as part of it, in 2014 CBW was renamed as Datopan Tengari National Board for Workers Education and Development. This is after the versatile labor leader Datopan Babura Tengari, CBWE will be replaced by uh, DTNBWED. So in my lecture slides also I'll be using DTNBWED. Now let's understand what this organization is all about or what is this association all about. The vision and mission. So particularly when we look into the vision of the organization, certain aspects of this organization is hovering around creation of values in training and education to promote inclusive growth, harmony and sustainability in all segments of workforce and social partners of production and services in organized, rural and unorganized sectors for igniting the minds of learners in the fields of accomplishment. So when you are looking into the vision of DTNBWD, it is more aligned towards the creation of values and when you are looking into uh, DTNB, WED, it is not just an association that has been formed to develop the human workforce as such. Moreover, it is an attempt to improve or to add on to the values in training and education. And there you are actually looking into a sustainability aspect, you are looking into a harmonious coexistence or a, or a conducive environment of work. So this is a broader vision that DTNBWED looks into. Now let's now narrow down 
and look into the mission of DTNB WED. DTNB WED certainly looks into to develop the patriotism and please do understand that when I'm stating the vision and mission I uh, to for the sake of not making it an entirely elaborative factual lecture I have not made an exhaustive list of mission but try to assimilate all the relevant vision mission activities of uh, the DTNB WD and for that matter any other association or organizations which we are looking into the class. So I am trying to give you the gist of the thing, the important kingpin factors of what this, this boards or what these associations actually do or what they are meant for. So when you look into DTNB WD, it is to develop patriotism among the workforce of India, which is a very significant uh, factor with commitment to communal harmony and national integration. Now there is no doubt that when you are looking into a country that is having a lot of diversities, not only in terms of the cognitive diversity, but also in terms of the, the clear plain demographic diversity. We belong to different place, different says, different sex, different race, caste, creed, etc. So when you are amalgamating, when you are bringing together all these workforce together, there is a possibility of disharmony, there is a possible of you know problems or conflict that can emerge because of their interaction. So all these aspects have been critically attended by the first mission which is to instill a level of patriotism whereby there is communal harmony and there is national integration. And you are looking into other mission statements to build the competence of the trade unions. So this is not an attempt to uh, outweigh or undermine the trade unions, rather the DTNB WED is more of an attempt to build the competence of the trade unions and through that enlighten members to instill sensitive and responsible internal leadership and to ensure that workers education. This is the primary aspect, becomes a cardinal feature of the trade union function. It also is to strengthen the workforce in rural, organized and unorganized sectors by imparting knowledge, information, skills, tools, techniques and support to form cooperative societies SSG self-help groups and other forms of self-employment and livelihood promotions for contributing intelligently to overall development and inclusive growth of the nation. That said, it also strives to bring out dormant creative capacities of each from within the workforce by encouraging scientific thinking and awakening spiritual powers. Now this is something which is a tough task. but. The organization in itself has taken a, a tough task by trying to bring, by attempting to bring both scientific temperament as well as the power of spirituality to lead a value based life which will take them to the level of self actualization. So these are the broader mission statement of the board. When you look into the board specifically, we have to understand how the representatives of the board members are nominated by government of India. So one, the chairman, the most important person is nominated by the government of India. Three representatives of government of India again. Six representatives of the organization of workers. Six representatives of the organization of employers. One representative of universities nominated by the chairman of the UGC. Four representatives of the state government, respective state governments who shall be nominated in rotation of two years term by the government of India. So please understand uh, the role of government of India even in this particular factor. One representative of associations working in the field of workers education or adult education specifically because they are no more aware about the nuts and bolts of the things that are to be governed or are to be monitored. And finally, the Director General of DTNB WED or erstwhile the CBWE. So this is specifically the composition of the board in general. Let us look into the objectives of DTNB WED. Now, when we tried to establish the, the vision and mission, we understood that harmony or sustainability was the core and bringing or taking a leaf from the core the objective is revolving around to strengthen among all sections of the working class a sense of patriotism national integrity unity communal harmony secularism pride of being an indian etc so this is the primary motto so where we have 
categorically established our mission, we are taking forward it as our objectives to develop amongst workers a great understanding of the problems of their social and economic environment, their responsibilities towards the family and the rights and obligations of the citizen. So we are not undermining that the moment a person is coming to work, he is there to earn a livelihood. He has certain commitments or responsibilities towards his or her family. That if it's understood clearly, there is more of a sense of belongingness, more of a sense of ownership towards the job he or she is performing. So this is where the board itself comes into picture to develop capacity of workers in all aspects to meet the challenges of the country. We have different resources and the manpower has been diverse and it has to be utilized, it has to be harnessed. So that is where the actual objective lies to develop strong, united and more responsible trade unions. Again, as we envisioned in the initial slides, it is not about undermining the trade unions. Moreover, it is an initiative to develop strong, united and more responsible trade unions to empower the workers as employees of the organization. So this is where the sense of belongingness, this is where the sense of ownership would come into picture. Now let's understand having gone through the vision and mission and even the objectives, let's understand what was the rationale behind the entire setup. When you look into the rationale, the first and the foremost one undoubtedly will be skill development. We do have a workforce, we do have a very young workforce, but are they skillful enough? Let's say talent would be wrong word because obviously they are talented, but are they skilled enough to contribute to the requirements of the economy? So the skill development happens to be the first rationale why this entire setup or the scheme had to be brought out. Now when you are looking into skill development, it is more of a, a routine of empowerment. It is more of an activity of empowerment where every single individual is financially, socially and, and to a certain extent spiritually and mentally empowered. Occupational health and safety is something which usually the workers ignore the, in the quest to earn money and the attempt to earn their livelihood. Most of the times the workers do not care about the safety. So occupational safety happens to be one of the most critical aspect. Now this particular scheme also tries to look into that factor and underscores the importance and the relevance of what exactly is occupational safety and why it is more critical in a day-to-day job centric or job performance activity. It also looks into community building. It also has a rational of alignment with national development goals. Now this is where the sustainability act factor comes into picture. If you are looking into a more sustainable setup, you need to have alignment with national development goals, partnerships and collaborations. Again, if you look into SDG sustainable development goals like SDG, SDG 17, it looks more into partnership, it looks more into collaborations. So this is where one of the rationale, the key rationale of the entire setup exists. So partnerships and collaborations are also have led to clear uh, initiation of such activities or such projects and finally it is to give inclusive access to education and training opportunities. Now when you look into DTNB, WED, we have to consider that there are certain functions which DTNB, WED has been given and the first and the foremost one is that it organizes different training programs for the workers of organized unorganized and even rural sector. So you can see that the government of India is making a clear distinction here between organized, unorganized and rural sector and they are trying to bring it together in under one umbrella when it comes to the training program at the national, regional, unit and village level with the aim to facilitate empowerment process amongst workers. This is the same empowerment, the spirit of empowerment which we were talking about or discussing about in the previous slide. Training programs are conducted by a network of 50 regional and 9 sub-regional directories 
athletes spread all over the country and an apex training institute vis-a-vis -vis the Indian Institute of Workers Education, IIWE, at Mumbai. The board also extends uh, certain critical financial support in forms of grants in aid to the registered trade unions and other institutions for conducting their own workers' education program. So I am trying to underscore the same point again, that this is many a time it has been criticized, many a time it has been commented uh, critic that this is an attempt to undermine the existence of trade union. No, moreover, it is an attempt to empower empower the workers, empower the, the, the people who are involved in organized, unorganized, even rural uh, work setup, work places. There are situations where they need the empowerment. There are situations where they need to have the financial independency. This is what the scheme is all about, providing them the requirements. DTNBWED, the over the vision mission and even the objectives and even now the functions we have seen that this is the key aspect. So when you are looking into DT and BWED, let's look into the role of this organization in the organized sector. It is more inclined towards the training of trainers. Remember, this is the organized sector we are talking about. We have a certain refresher course for the trainers. We have certain CB capacity building programs. Uh, happening with respect to or under the domain of DTNBWD as a critical role of the, the organization. Joint educational programs are, are conducted. The quality of life is improved. Programs for self-generation of funds is again another aspect where there are certain tie-ups with, with higher educational institutions and other educational institutions which train them, as I already mentioned, training of trainers. Special self-generation of fund programs, special targeted programs are being conducted and finally need-based seminars and training programs are also part of a critical role of DT and BWD in organized sector. And when you look into unorganized and rural sector, the role of DTNBWED is critical there too. It organizes camps, it organizes empowerment programs for weaker sections. Now, when you are looking into the DTNBWED, formal sector has its own uh, certain blessings, its own certain resources. So, DTNBWED has to be just a facilitator, just a guide, just a mentor. But more of hand-holding is required for DTNBWED when it comes to unorganized and rural sector. So that's where you go to their place, go and conduct camps in unorganized sectors. Empowerment programs for weaker section have to be conducted. There should be a level playing field that has to be generated first. And similarly in rural sector orientation program for rural volunteers because there are certain limitations. The information dissemination or the information has to be uniformly passed across different states across different districts, across different panchayats, villages, etc. So you need to have those orientation programs for rural volunteers to be conducted. Empowerment programs need to be conducted and also the rural awareness camps. That's where the actual requirement, actual rational, actual vision and finally the actual function of the associations or uh, the setups like DT and BWD can be translated or can be taken towards the unorganized and rural sector. So when we look into this lecture carefully, we see that there has been a gradual shift towards DTNBWD. From 2014, we have renamed it and we have understood it as a more of an organization or association or scheme that is working towards two aspects. One is it is working towards empowerment. When you're talking about empowerment, it is more of the financial independency, more of the, the empowerment that is happening in the workplace, more of the empowerment happening in terms of the, the rights of the, the workers. They are aware of the organizational hazards, maybe the safety hazards that they face on a day-to-day -day basis. They are aware of the harassments maybe that they face on a day-to-day -day basis. So empowerment is the first important aspect. And the second most critical aspect today from this class is sustainability. When you look into this understanding of DTNBWED, the whole process of 
the existence or let's say initiation and the existence of DTNB WDs hovering around the sustainability aspect. We are talking about collaborations and partnerships. We are talking about systematic, uh, you know, uh, partnerships whereby every single employee, employer feels empowered, feels secured and feels safe in his or her workplace. So that's all from this lecture. We'll see you in another class in another day. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.